Beep, 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 beep. Morning. All that's new. You'd approve from the Jester. Fancy some good news, folks? Let's do, should we do a bit of good news? Because, you know, it's three o'clock in the morning, as you can see. Somewhat crepuscular out there. Is that right? Crepuscular? I think so. <laughs> anyway, let's have a go at this. Uh, there's an article that's appeared in the Irish Times, which I'm <clears throat> more than happy with, and I hope you will be too. But you can have a look at the Dubris. It's in there. Buy me a coffee. Do the usual. Yeah, right. It's in the Dubris. Okay. So <clears throat> the um, HSE is the Health Service Executive. It's to develop an updated model of care for the treatment of gender dysphoria. Its Chief Clinical Officer, Dr. Colm Henry, has said, so this is from the Irish Times, as I mentioned, good news here for um, people who are dwellers on the Emerald Isle, a most beautiful country. A report on the topic was presented to the, the Executive Management Committee on Tuesday and a multidisciplinary team to update the model for one of the most contro controversial areas of contemporary healthcare will now be established. We intend that the team will be led by a clinician from a relevant speciality, whose role will be to lead this process, ensuring widespread stakeholder engagement. These words do worry me, mind, but it's, you know, that's just me. The epi stakeholder, say. Mm. The epidemiology of gender dysphoria is changing and will continue to do so. We are aware of 15 other countries, including the UK, who are looking at their model of care and what we are doing, and we are doing so too. The development comes after a visit to Dublin to meet the health, the health executive last week by Dr. Hilary Cass. Cass, who is heading an ongoing review in the UK of the treatment of gender dysphoria in children and young people, had said in an interim report last year, we're aware of this, the CAS sort of half-time report, that she recommended the replacement of the single specialist gender identity service in the Tavistock Clinic, Clinic in London with six regional centres in England and Wales. Following the visit um, by Dr CAS, the HSE is hoping to collaborate and participate in that collaboration in an international research programme as part of an effort to develop an appropriate care model. Now that's interesting, isn't it? We are aware of, they said earlier, and I read it, we are aware of 15 other countries, including the UK, who are looking at their models of Clare, and that they hope to collaborate with uh, International Research Programme. This is good news, folk. Okay, this is good news. This is very good news. The longitudinal programme will follow up, you know, it's gonna have a wide range. The longitudinal programme will follow up on patients to see how treatment is addressed. We know from information that we have in the public sphere, no follow-ups were ever done. Uh, we know the serious situation now because uh, Time to Think, the book brought, that came out the day before yesterday, is now a number one bestseller on Amazon. I'm really close to getting to the point. I'm saying that from a conceptual point of view, from the point of view of where are we, from the point of view of what is this, I think the jig's almost up and you can expect the infection to get absolutely fuming and red and raw about this because as we box these people off into a corner and end the medicalization, sterilization and mutilation of ADHD, autistic, looked after and gay and lesbian children and those that have been abused, you can bet your bottom dollar that the cohorts of the Church of Gender are going to become even more vociferous and even more nasty. I've been on the receiving end of some of that this week. The effort to develop a domestic service has been hampered, amongst other reasons, by divergent views on the best approach within the health service. This is because the health services were, again, were infiltrated by ideologues, as we're seeing organisations now being infiltrated by ideologues, such as the, the Top 100 on Stonewall, um, the judiciary, the police. Again, this is recognition of what's happening, I think, breeding between the lines. For the past number of years, the Tavistock Clinic has been seeing children and adolescent patients in Ireland, in Crumlin, in Dublin, in a hospital, children's hospital. Uh, it looks to me like that's slowing down. And it says they will be developing a new end-to-end -end model of care, because since the model of care that was developed in 2016, there has been a great amount of change in the epidemiology, the understanding of how this, this, this problem has developed. Um, there are many more people declaring gender dysphoria, and in addition, there is more knowledge. Many more people declaring a gender dysphoria. Not many more people who have. It's a win, folks, it's a win. <laughs> In her interim report, 
We're gonna save some people. Aren't we? In, in her interim report, Dr. Cass did not give an opinion on the pre prescribing of hormone treatments to children and adolescents suffering from gender dysphoria. The review is not able to provide definitive advice on the use of puberty blockers and feminizing, masculinizing hormones at this stage due to gaps in the evidence base. However, recommendations were developed as our future research program progresses. Um, it then talks about patient profiles and the difference between the fact that we've now got many, many young women presenting. And then it says at primary, secondary and specialist level, there is a lack of agreement. And in many instances, a lack of open discussion. This is recognition of the capture of the medical establishment by uh, gender ideologists and queer theorists. What we will be looking at, they said, um, will be discussions that there needs to be discussions about the extent to which gender incongruence in childhood and adolescence can be an inherent and immutable phenomenon for which transition is the best option for the individual. It's not or a more fluid and temporal response to a range of developmental, social and psychological factors. She said, that's Hillary. Um, I think it's a win. And I think what's coded into that particular article and the speech and the statements made by the health, Secretary, uh, uh, health executive in Ireland and also Hillary Kassler is that they've recognised that this is um, an iatrogenic social contagion that has been perpetrated upon gay autistic. ADHD looked after kids, kids who've been abused, kids who've lost parents. Um, and it's been perpetrated upon them by establishments such as schools, uh, universities, backed up by police promoting this nonsense, um, by councils promoting this nonsense. I mean, the culpability for this is absolutely enormous. Um, and I think we need to start allowing people to say, we're stopping. We're stopping. They, we need to give them a get out now. OK, you're going to stop using all this nonsense. You're going to get this the, the TQ plus app, everything. So I think this could be the beginning. I think this could be the opening of a, of a, of a discussion around how has this infected our society? Now, I have concerns, as you can imagine. Um, but my concerns are not the same as the ones I, rec I covered in the last time I spoke about Cass. It's possible I've done Hillary a dirty. I'm sorry, Hillary. If I've got it wrong, I really am genuinely sorry, because this is far better than I thought it was going to be after the last reporting we had and after your last letter which I found most concerning. I mean, you, know, you don't have to listen to me, I'm nobody. You know, but are we seeing this? So I, I, we're gonna take this as a win today because I think it probably is, but I do have a concern, right? I have a concern. And that concern is that we have, this is a, like, like it's got, I've got a vested interest in this, so it's difficult to talk about. I, I do adult teaching, adult education, you know most of this. I do adult education for a living. Um, and <clears throat> I have worked extensively across sectors in the UK, um, the civil service, you know, all that, like HMRC, I've done NHS, I've done businesses, big businesses, small businesses, you name it. I've done it all in the last 30 years. And I can tell you with unequivocally, without any fear of being wrong about it, because I was there when it happened, that since about 2007, 2008 or thereabouts, when the crash came along and everybody went, eh, eh, eh. and then the introduction of what we now know to be online learning that everything that could possibly be put onto online learning which is or e-learning as they originally called it if you remember nobody says that anymore do they e-learning you know why because it was only ever just reading they used to say right so this this training course is now e-learning and i'd be like what you mean reading because that's all it was tick the box when you've read this um that we have not in the informal education sphere we have, have a, as a society have been remiss in training people in, for example, things which seem stupid but aren't, like communication and leadership and how to manage people correctly and how to be organisationally aware and how to be able to be, uh, to have a solid idea of what it means to um, provide good customer service as opposed to thinking that you're actually working in servitude. We've been remiss in training it because we stuck it all online, right? And being online is great. My seminars, we have a ball chatting and you know, but that's all it is it's a seminar okay you want learning you need depth and i don't just mean depth of subject i mean depth of space so you need to be in the room you want the real learning to take place you need to be in the room because learning is like a is a communication game and communication isn't just about what you say it's about how you hold yourself it's about how you interact with others it's about what you do in a given space um and we've stopped doing that not many people do that anymore we don't get many people in a room together to spend a day talking about leadership and what it means. You know, we don't get that. So my concern is this. 
all well and good. It's going to be great that Cass has, re has met with the Irish, that there's a possibility of uh, 15 other countries joining with an international, an international look at this, an international view of the situation with gender. But my concern is that what we will see if we're not careful is that we will continue to rely on the people whose utter stupidity at middle and senior management levels and their utter inability to lead will simply continue with the nonsense because it can meme. So I'm the boss. I talk to my X number of managers and say, we all want to do this. By the time it's gone down two levels, it's someone else. <clears throat> we need to start recognising that I think it's unfortunate but true that we may have bred stupidity into an enormous amount, an enormous amount of people who are in leadership positions in our country and that we may have done so at the same time as we were promoting, promoting people because they were confident rather than because they were competent. And now we are seeing that becoming codified in the idea of equity, where you'll get promoted because you happen to be the right person with the right immutable characteristic. So I'm going to take it as a win today, but I, in the background of my mind is, do we have the societal communication structures? Do we have the people in those communication structures to effectively communicate this message outwards and ensure that people understand that the UK PLC has been the victim of one of the most extraordinary medical confidence tricks in history? and one of the most extraordinary social and cultural confidence, confidence tricks in history. And then we can get the TQ off the LGB and we can go back to where we were 10 years ago, sensibly working together in order to make sure that people had good futures rather than messing around with equity and the nonsense that's been birthed from the fetid, fetid hole of universities. But it's still a win today. We'll take it. More on more on more on uh, Sheffield University coming soon. Warrior teachers arise, you know all that. Not arise. How dare I? Warrior teachers arise. Keep jesting. I'll see you later.